Hello and welcome back. So from the previous lecture on the initial part of the derivation of the recursive least squares estimator, we have seen this equation where we could already see some dependence between wk and the next estimate of w at the next time step k plus one. And in this video, we are going to uh, complete this derivation and get a first final representation of the recursive least squares estimator as it could be implemented in control and computer code. Um, based on this equation, so based on this intermediate result from the previous lecture video, we're first going to see that this multiplication z transpose times that, that might raise some similarities in your head with respect to one of the previous lecture videos which we already had on the properties of the ordinary least squares estimator because that was something similar like the inverse of a scaled covariance matrix of the estimate. So therefore we can also define this also for short notation as phi inverse, so z transpose times z is called p inverse. So to be precise, p inverse at time step k because this is more or less the same as from the covariance discussion where p would be 1 over sigma nu square times the variance, so the covariance matrix of mu, so the covariance noise matrix. So basically this p is the, let's say, normalized via the standard deviation, uh, via the variance of the covariance matrix. So therefore this would be the inverse of it and yeah, as I mentioned, that was from the uh, previous lecture on the properties of the um, ordinary least squares estimator. So therefore, this P inverse is also some measure of uncertainty, or in this case, an inverse measure of uncertainty with respect to the ordinary least squares estimate. Okay. First of all, we have introduced p or p inverse, and based on this, we can just introduce p also at other parts and specifically also back here. So we can just rewrite the equation quite quickly and utilize this notation. So we get here p inverse at time step k, plus this is still the regressor vectors at the new time step, z transpose k plus 1 times z, k plus 1 inverse times again here with the short notation we get for this here we get a p inverse again at time step k times w our parameter vector plus again here also the multiplication of the two new regressor vectors at the next time step, k plus one times z of k plus one r as previous. Okay, and now basically comes a big step after this just rewriting using this definition of p, because we still have this inverse here. And what we're now going to use is a formula called the uh, Sherry morrison woodbury formula, which can help us to rewrite this entire uh, parenthesis, or this entire parenthesis, including the uh, inverse, because using the Sherman uh, Morrison Woodbury formula, we can rewrite this completely as P of K, so this covariance measure from the previous time step, minus P of K times that transpose times k of k plus 1 times z at k plus 1 times um, p of k okay so these are the covariance matrices or the scaled covariance matrices and these are the new regressor vectors and we divide that y1 plus 
z of k plus 1 times p of k times z transpose k plus 1, okay? This is a fraction because <laughs> this multiplication will become a scalar, so this is a um, quadratic matrix. This is basically uh, becomes a column vector, this is a row vector, so this becomes a scalar, one plus a scalar, so we can divide this entire thing. And above this uh, fraction line, we have basically another matrix which is uh, calculated here, which is multiplied and can then be uh, summed or subtracted from P of K. And this is known or comes from the German Morrison and Woodbody formula. which allows us under certain conditions, uh, which may apply, but they normally apply in most uh, practical applications, to rewrite this entire inverse by this recursive expression where we do not need to take the inverse explicitly. Okay? And if we rewrite this entire expression of the inverse with this, and just multiply it with this parenthesis. So this will be our next step, right? So we multiply, maybe I put a parenthesis also around here to make this clear. That this parenthesis is basically subtracted for the other one. So that's what we do in the next step. We multiply this parenthesis with this expression. And what we get from this is WK plus P of K times Z of K plus 1 transpose. So this is our regressor vector, not matrix, divided by 1 plus Z of k plus 1 times p of k times z transpose of k plus 1 times, parenthesis open, y of k plus 1 minus z of k plus 1 times W K. Okay, so just multiplied with each other and a little bit rearranged in order to highlight something, let's say, special. Because um, if we look at these different terms, what we basically have here is something like a prediction error, right? So the output at the time step K plus one is subtracted from Z times w, so this is a prediction taking the, let's say, last or previous parameter vector and the new regressor, the new observable vector, which I get. So that's basically here something like y hat. And we subtract it from y, so this is therefore an error term here at that point. So the error, let's call it e of k. And this prediction error is now multiplied with this. And this expression here is basically a vector, right? So here in the lower part of the fraction, we still have just some scalar. And in the upper part of the fraction, p times z inverse, uh, not inverse, transpose of this regressor vector, this is basically another vector which is uh, composed out of that. And we can interpret this something like a gain or multiplication um, gain, gain gamma of k, which will amplify this error and basically scale this error towards wk to get the new wk plus 1, right? And I think that's quite reasonable and quite intuitive in that sense that the larger this error is at a certain time step, so when we get new observables and when we get new measurements, that this error, depending on its strength, will lead 
to a harder or less hard change of Wk. And this gain term here, which I formulated, is strongly dependent of Pk. So this is our covariance or normalized covariance measure. And of course, this is something like also um, a memory of the past, right? Because we will also see that we are able to rewrite P of K just shortly. But you can already see from this that P of K has something like a memorizing function that depending on how good this error in the past was, that this gain term might become also larger or smaller in order to amplify this error or dampen the effect of the error. However, we have not discussed how we can actually calculate uh, P of K. We need to discuss that also because currently we just have a basically um, recursive formulation from WK plus 1 to WK, but we need P of K for that. And for P of K, we can also just basically redo the more or less same derivation um, and say, okay, P of K plus 1, so at the next time step, that would be if we take here our approach, the same as Z transpose A of 1 times Z transpose, not transpose, that's wrong, out the transposition just of k plus 1 inverse, right? So this is basically just from our definition here for the next time step. And we could, of course, rewrite this again as that transpose of time step k times z of k, so the regressor matrices at the previous time step, plus the new regressor vectors z transpose k plus 1 times z k plus 1 inverse. So here again, this is the regressor matrix, so this is why we have a capital Z, and these are the new regressor vectors, which we have two small z's here which are multiplied with each other. And of course, that here is, again, according to our definition, in P inverse of K, right? So just our definition here. And in this point, we can again apply the Sherman, Morris, and Woodbury formula because we have basically in Similar structure, here we have P inverse, and here an inverse, and here we have K plus 1, which is basically more, uh, more or less the same as at this point. And if we apply the sherman morrison woodbury formula, I just skip here one or two calculation steps to speed up things a little bit. Then what we get is, we get P of K plus 1 is identical to the identity matrix plus gamma of k, so our gain, which we have here, so this is our gain vector, to be precise, times z of k, so the previous regressor vector, so that's why it's a small uh, z at that point, times p of k, okay? So this is identical to this term and this term is identical to this entire term here, right? So these are the two important equations which we have. We will also summarize them briefly in the next video uh, to give you a better overlook about uh, the final result of this derivation. However, the important part is now that we have found a recursive formulation of both the representation of a new parameter estimate, wk, at the next time step, which can be calculated just for inserting the new observables and the new regressor matrix, the re new regressor variables. And here also with the matrix p as an uncertainty measure, we can more or less do the same. And we only need to store the matrix p and the um, parameter vector w because all other values 
can be just thrown away because we don't need them as this is now a free, uh, fully recursive algorithm which can be calculated online and which only needs the most recent data sampled when it comes to the output and to the regressor variable. We will briefly summarize this in the next video. Also add a small thing to it to come to the classical recursive least squares estimator and then in the over next video we will apply it also to a practical example. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.